Hello there, YouTube. It's your boy, B3. Back with another kicking action figure review. Today, we're looking at another figure from McFarlane Toys. Every time I say I'm not going to collect much DC, I just, I just get sucked back into it. Today, we are looking at the DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys Death Storm from the Atrocitus Build-A-Figure Wave, or Black Knight, Blackest Night Wave. Now, fun fact about Deathstorm, he actually doesn't take the name Deathstorm until brightest day. He's Black Lantern Firestorm in, uh, <laughs> in Blackest Night, you know? But, oh well, it doesn't super matter. Uh, Deathstorm makes for a shorter video title. <laughs> it makes it a bit easier for me. So that's uh, totally fine. And uh, Blackest Night is one of my favorite comic stories of all time. The Jeff Johns Green Lantern stuff probably are my favorite comics of all time, or at least some of them, like up there with Invincible and like Scott Snyder, Batman and stuff, like just amazing, amazing stuff. So very happy to have a Blackest Night wave. I remember when it was first teased with the Batman, I was super excited. We're actually going to put this guy to the side so I can show you accessories. He comes with the normal black stand with the little peg hole, uh, in case yours needs help standing up. He also comes with the card, but look at this! We actually have comic art on the cards! You know, I've been complaining about having just product shots on it, but now we actually have comic art, which makes the cards much more interesting. So much more interesting. And I checked the read-up on the back, and the read-up is for Blackest Night, not Brightest Day. Pretty cool. To the side. And then he also comes with a lantern. And I don't super remember individual Black Lanterns having individual lanterns, I think they just, like, drawed power kind of directly from Necron, and then they, like, ripped emotions out of people's hearts to feed their battery to, like, bring Necron to life, and, like, the anti-monitor was trapped inside it and all this crazy stuff. But, uh, even if they did, I don't remember them being silver lanterns. And then I thought, oh, maybe, you know, maybe this could be the white lantern that he's trying to get his hands on in Brightest Day. But it's, like, still the wrong color, right? <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. That's fine. Then we got the build a figure parts. Right? We have Atrocitus' head, founder and leader of the Red Lantern Corps, on occasion. Uh, and then, you know, his shoulder pads and <laughs> neck brace. So, you know, I will be building him. I actually already have all the figures if you saw the last uh, action figure haul video. I got the whole wave uh, for like 50% off on McFarland's website for some holiday deal. So I do have the uh, Black Lantern Earth 2 Superman, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, and Black Lantern Batman. But yeah, that's it for accessories. And I actually do wish he would have come with a little more, maybe something to clip on the wrists, like, you know, the, the effects, like the molecule effects that like Firestorm characters have. Or interchangeable hands, because now I have a holding hand and I don't want to display him with the lantern, so... You know, another hand would have been nice. Oh well. Uh, so the accessories aren't my favorite on this guy, but at least we got comic art on the card. Now for articulation. You got forward and back, up and down on that head and stuff. Nice wobble on it. Up and down on the arms, you know. You've got not as much in and out as I would like. Like, you see that cover joint's in there, but mine doesn't seem to want to, like, come out and do anything. I don't know. I mean, it still has all that movement, it's just not as cut. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to work its way out. I've been playing around with this guy, but I haven't been able to get it to do what it's supposed to. But yeah, forward, back, in and out. He is hindered by the shoulder pads, but what do you expect? You know? And then you got the bicep swivel and everything, double elbow bend, wrist swivel and forward and back on the wrists, you know? You've got all the torso and waist movement. In and out on the legs, forward and back. You know, it's got the rubber cover so it can go back further than a lot of toy lines. Double knee bend right there. Not really any much turn on the thigh there. And then, of course, you have up and down on his little feet and the ankle pivot and the little toe beans with the peckles. Very cool. Very cool. And he is sculpted quite well. I think the sculpt is really, really good looking. I really like the head. I like the translucency on the flame. You guys know I'm a sucker for translucent action figures. Already mentioned the rubber cover. He stands quite well without uh, the stand. At least mine does, which is good. You just gotta pose his little feet, right? I like his big claw hand. Very cool. Good paint, too. Not much to look at on the back, but... 
I mean, I don't think he really was an iconic either, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I read Blackest Night, but I have read it many times. The same with Brightest Day. I need to actually reread Brightest Day, because I haven't reviewed it on this channel yet. But I have reviewed Blackest Night and all the tie-ins and stuff. So yeah, pretty cool. Now, we're going to get into my personal favorite part. Size comparisons. First up, the DC Collectibles DC Essentials Superman. I think that's fine. I actually think that's a fine scaling. Don't you, Papa? Yes, son. Yes, I do. Pretty cool. Then we're going to compare him with uh, a Mattel figure, the DC Universe Classic Sinestro Corps Cyborg Superman, who is far too small. Sorry. <laughs> but he is in a different scale, so that makes sense. And then a figure from his own line that we reviewed recently, the Dark Knight's Death Metal, Speed Metal, Jay Garrick Flash, who scales perfectly. So yeah, he does appear to scale well with his own line, which is, of course, what matters. Alright, so that's good. So he scales well with other figures that are in his specific 7-inch scale. Uh, the accessories leave a good bit to be desire desired, but detail, paint, and articulation are pretty rad. And I'm glad to finally have a Death Storm in my collection. Plus, even if you have the older Blackest Night one and stuff, this one will still articulate more and whatnot. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I will be seeing you all, you guessed it, next time. Bye for now!